Welcome to BWB TV. My name is Barry Walsh with Informa Connect. Today I'll be interviewing David Pollard, who is the head of corporate research at Sartorius. Welcome, David. It's great to see you again. Hi, Barry. Welcome to be here. I look forward to hearing about your current initiatives, but let's start with a look ahead. What kind of future is bioprocessing heading towards? And accordingly, what inventions and features would be required from process intensification to satisfy those needs? Yeah, great question, uh, Barry. And um, it's certainly an exciting time in the in the bioprocessing uh, arena. Um, I really think that the uh, customers and end users are really looking for, you know, modular, flexible facilities of the future. And I think that that is really starting to take shape. As I think we've seen many companies are starting to build these facilities uh, around the world. And, um, and these facilities really need flexible solutions. I really see that, you know, it, it's exciting time in bioprocess for all sorts of different modalities, right? In, in terms of expanding out from monoclonal antibodies to different uh, nanobodies, biospecifics, ADCs, biosimilars, but also in the gene therapy and cell therapy space, and obviously now, uh, more prevalently in the in the vaccines arena, right? Um, and so I do see uh, customers really thinking about how flexible those facilities can be, and can they really be smaller footprint um, facilities, uh, operating spaces within those facilities for really driving multiple products and multiple processes in the smaller footprint, single use enabled facilities of the future. Um, you know, I think we've even had customers thinking about how, how combined can those multiple facilities be, such as, you know, viral vector production for gene therapy alongside viral vaccines, and, and really um, thinking about how flexible and um, coordinated these facilities can be. Um, so can we have drug substance, for example, co-locating with drug product and really cut and, and really think about um, really close coordinated supply chains of the future and, um, and have a much more coordinated uh, approach for straight through processing, for example. Um, can we think about having you know, eliminating some of that drug substance, uh, a drug substance made separately, right, and, and tested separately. If it was all co-located together, you know, could you reduce the analytical drug substancing, QAQC drug testing that goes on now and go through to, to drug product in a, in a much more coordinated and potentially more efficient uh, approach? So certainly, I think the, the technologies to do this uh, we need, uh, obviously, um, intensified technologies and continue that effort. And, uh, and we see the industry continuing to drive to higher titers and intensifying the purification stream and thinking of, and working towards integrated processing, integrating the upstream to the capture steps and going beyond that, um, thinking about uh, controlled strategies that allow that uh, um, overarching control of those integrated processes and um, integrating that with, with things like real-time release and, um, and quality workflows that allow for, um, you know, QAQC release on the shop floor and really minimizing the um, offline analysis time and, uh, and QAQC time that happens historically happens after the processing of, 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 of the batches. Um, I think from an inventions perspective, clearly the, um, you know, the continuous processing in the downstream and continuous chromatography steps is really working to enable that fully integrated process. And, um, and as I say, the continued expansion of the PAT toolbox and control strategies to do that uh, will really work towards the concepts of 
uh, ultimately autonomous type workflows uh, and really work to drive down costs and, um, and, and flexibility across, you know, reducing capital, reducing operating costs, and, uh, and ultimately produ- reducing the cost of goods um, so that we can uh, find a better, a more efficient, productive ways to providing drugs to patients, right, in a much more flexible and rapid approach. Um, and, um, and, and to do this in a much more efficient approach. Yeah, David, that's really exciting. And how far down the road would these changes be implemented in the industry? Yeah, I think there's, you know, when you think about that whole um, sort of outlining of the vision there, I think you can see it in a, in a staggered approach. You know, I think you can see now, right, the industry implementing these approaches into clinical production. And, you know, we've heard about, for example, at the, the ECI Continuous Processing Conference last November, we heard about the companies that are starting to build the facility of the futures. So I think that, you know, over the next two years, we will start to see more of these integrated intensified processes moving towards being used for commercial production. Um, and uh, I think that it'll be a staggered approach in the sense of the um, advanced control strategies and um, technology improvements being staggered and over the next sort of five to 10 years. Um, I see that, you know, the end users really looking for, with, with those heterogeneous pipelines of products, they're really looking for flexibility. So I see that they're going to want to switch out um, technologies within different unit operations to fit different modalities. And, um, and obviously they're going to want um, uh, digital workflows to handle that and the, the concept of plug and play digital workflows and being able to um, switch out unit operations that are that are recognized on a digital network. And, um, and so I think that those opportunities will, will start to flow in over the next two to two to two to two to five year time frame. That's fantastic. And so what are the various initiatives that Sartorius is working on to satisfy those needs? Yeah, I can talk talk broadly around those. I think that, you know, in the short term now, we've really rallied around putting together a launching a intensification platform from upstream all the way through to downstream. So that's a really exciting time for the tourists, particularly around the um, access to the um, simulated moving bed technology now, the bio SMB, that so we now have a full um, intensified sea train and intensified upstream process all the way through to the downstream, the chromatography offerings, uh, high capture uh, membrane technologies that we're developing, and also in the single pass, uh, single use TFF uh, approaches. So uh, I know my colleague um, uh, Priyanka Gupta is presenting on that on that proposals on the 23rd of the uh, uh, September at the the BPI virtual. So um, and she's listed out. She's done a lot of work to show the um, the benefits there in terms of productivity uh, and costs and uh, improvements in, uh, in in throughput and efficiency. Um, but certainly in the uh, in the corporate research space that, that that i am part of you know we're certainly thinking you know beyond in that five year five to ten year horizon and uh, and certainly um thinking about as i mentioned the uh, advanced control strategies so we've been working within corporate research to create concepts of new approaches uh, and so some of examples of that are the um the control strategies that I mentioned and thinking about hybrid control approaches and Chris McGreedy in the um, advanced data analytics and corporate research has been pioneering leading team to build mechanistic models and hybrid modeling so that we can really have um, prediction simulation and control of an upstream process 
and we're looking at that and building that for the downstream. And so that would be part of the foundation of an overarching um, uh, autonomous type control of a um, integrated continuous process and um, and thinking about a process that can uh, be self-aware and, um, and and deal with excursions automatically within you know within a design space as a sort of um, five year beyond vision uh, concept. Um, so that's an exciting space and we and we we're lucky enough to have a um, a pilot plan via processing facility in my group in Germany where we're we're building that um, integrated process and uh, and demonstrating the concepts of what what could be uh, feasible in that in that control uh, strategy approach. Um, and also, I think in the upstream space, uh, looking at um, uh, intensified seed train that we're that we're launching now that that uh, Priyanka will talk about. But thinking about how we can improve that further and thinking about a closed process seed train uh, all the way from the vial uh, to the bioreactor. Uh, and thinking about what um, connectors and materials uh, we need to, to use to do that. I think another area that we're working on that I that I didn't mention that I should have mentioned in the in the first question of, of the vision is certainly there's a, an increasing uh, realization that we that we need as an industry we need to do more about sustainability. Uh, and certainly in in my group at Satoris we're looking at um, new plastics and components, um, thinking about um, recycling and uh, recycling options and biodegradable plastics and the whole concept of designing for sustainability. So thinking about that from the single use uh, components, but also from a process perspective, thinking about how can we design the next generation uh, process with process improvements and technologies, not just around productivity, but also thinking about uh, the sustainability aspects. So thinking about reducing water use, energy use, uh, and obviously thinking about reducing waste, and particularly the single use plastic waste, and how we can enable a circular economy approach and, and recycling of plastics and bringing plastics back into our uh, bioprocessing uh, workflow. And certainly there is an, so those are the internal things that I talked about that we're doing at Satoris and the corporate research, but we've also been involved in external consortium because obviously some of these challenges are enormous, right? And need an industry uh, solution. And one of those is the, is the nimble uh, consortium, and um, and we, they have launched a um, a program, a nimble-led program on intensified and integrated processing, and, um, and and one of those arms there is is looking at flexibility and second and third generation technologies with a ten year horizon, uh, but also sustainability is part of that, and I and I co-lead that uh, with colleagues, so we can think about how we can drive some of those uh, industry challenges around uh, sustainability. So a, a lot there, but certainly uh, exciting times for uh, uh, thinking about improving uh, uh, efficiencies and productivity, uh, especially with all the different um, therapeutic areas that are, that are expanding. Yeah, David, those are very exciting and I certainly look forward to hearing more about those initiatives during the Sartorius presentations that will be taking place during the BPI virtual event, which will be held on September 21st to the 25th. So I wanted to thank you, David, for joining us today. I know, thanks very much for the opportunity and uh, glad to be here. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you everyone for watching BWB TV.